Olympical athletes and fans of bodybuilding, Tarek El Gindi with the Mr. Olympia. Today, his name is Akeem Williams, Akeem the Beast Williams. He just placed third at the Arnold Classic UK. He's one of the biggest mysteries in the IFBB Pro League. Every great bodybuilder, every judge in the IFBB Pro League loves his physique. He's been on the first call out at the Mr. Olympia. He just placed third at the Arnold UK. But sometimes we don't know which Akeem Williams we're going to get. But we're going to discuss that with the man himself. Good evening. Good afternoon, Akeem. Uh, good afternoon, guys. And uh, Definitely. Uh, thank you guys for having me. You know, I really appreciate it. I, I took some time off from this, this sport and uh, finally come back on the stage again. So it's a great feeling. Well, absolutely. You were one of the favorites uh, because a lot of the, the bodybuilders, such as Chris Cormier, Sean Ray, a lot of the guys love your physique. Uh, Sean, um, 1987 uh, national champion, Ironman champion, Arnold Classic champion, Mr. Olympia runner-up, arguably Mr. Olympia 1984. Uh, we won't go there because that's a sore thing for Sean Ray. But, Sean, uh, good evening. All right, all right, all right. How's it going? What's up, and Chris? Also, also up, joining man? us, the 1993 Mr. USA's uh, Ironman champion four times, Chris Cormier. Chris, how are you? Good. How you doing? How you guys doing? Chris doing good. Cool. Thank you. Okay, Akeem, here's the question. Uh -huh. A condition Akeem Williams at his best first call out at the Olympia a guy that can beat anybody on a side chest, on a side triceps. But sometimes Akeem Williams is not at his best conditioning. What's going on? Why don't we get Akeem Williams from the Arnold UK in every single show? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, I had a lot of issues with coaching. <laughs> I, know, I mean, I'm the type of person that I don't really put my stuff out there, business out there and everything like that. But after that 2020 Olympia, uh, I was left high and dry in terms of coaching. You know, my, I don't want to like make it personal, but my coach, you know, he was going through some stuff and he literally just disappeared. You know, nobody could get in contact with him and anything like that. So I had to fend for myself. I had to try to figure out what to do. You know, of course I had people that helped me out and like a couple of my friends and stuff like that that helped me to uh, get through those two shows, which was the, the 2021 um, Olympia and uh, 2021 Arnold Classic which I still placed at the Arnold Classic. You know, I think I got fifth place, I think. But it was kind of hard, man, going from, like, you know, working with somebody and, you know, we finally got on a roll and we finally was making noise. We got sixth place at the Olympia, and all of a sudden that person just disappeared, you know? So that, I took a big hit from that, you know? And I had to regroup and, and try to get confidence in myself and try to figure out a lot of stuff on my own, you know? But I never... I, never, have, I was huh? going to say... Don't you have like a good idea about what works for your body by now? Yeah. Or? Well, back then I didn't, you know, because I, I left everything to, up to his hands, you know. So I, I really didn't have a good idea of okay, what should I do or what shouldn't I do, you know. But now, after going through that process and learning more about myself and my body, I have a good, better idea of, you know, what I need to do to get, on, get in condition and stuff like that. And you're working Sean. with Chris. Chris. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm I'm working with Chris Acido now, yeah. Chris Acido, yeah. I yeah, think that's yeah. a, a good move for you, man, especially for what you need it, man. He's a he yeah, has yeah. a he has a, a great track record, great uh, I, uh yeah, I, I, has, I'm yeah. not I'm I'm not gonna like knock any other other coaches I've worked with in terms of like, you know, they've all played a role in getting me to this position, but by far, out of all the other coaches I've worked with, I think uh Chris Acido is definitely the best i've been with so far in terms of re reliability you know always being there and stuff like that oh he's just, on you man yeah he's on exactly you. <laughs> yeah he's, he's he's been the best so far and I, I wish if i could go back in time i wish i had made that move sooner hey sean you placed top five at the mr olympia 95 percent of the times you just had your debut where you were out of the top five but your entire career, you were in the top five at the Mr. Olympia. If you could give an advice to Akeem Williams, who is like everybody's favorite, you know, uh, he's got the mass, he's got the small waist, the beautiful lines. What can Akeem Williams do 
to show consistency because that's what we want. We want to see him at the first call out at the Olympia every year. Yeah, I mean, there's some things that are beyond his control, just like mine. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, you got some good competition out there. Mm-hmm. And not losing to slouches. I mean, I know he's had some epic battles with John De La Rosa. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, Hadi Shupan and, and Samson are the real deal. And, and those guys are there. Uh, it's great that he's choosing those harder shows uh, to compete against the best of the best. Um, but, you know, sometimes – you know, you're at a genetic disadvantage. Um, there's also trial and error. And, and we make our biggest mistakes, you know, once or twice a year. You only have once or twice a year to, to get on that stage and do it. And if you don't nail it and someone else does, you kind of it's like you're back to the drawing board. Mm-hmm. So uh, Akeem's picking the right shows, um, putting himself up against the right competition. Um, he's, you know, he's like me. He's got to hope one of these guys slip on a banana peel. But uh, and, and you can't. You can't win if you don't compete. So mm-hmm. he's with some heavy hitters, man. And and what are we going to say about Hottie and Samson and, and John De La Rosa's comeback? I mean, mm-hmm. I know they had the rubber match between Ohio and in London, but he's on the right. He's on the right path. I'm glad he's picking these shows with the with the. Listen, if this was the New York Pro or the the Texas Pro or the California Pro, Akeem's in first place. Mm-hmm. So it's not that he's doing something wrong. It's that he's standing up there with some heavy hitters and. And you got to take your lumps, and sometimes you only get one or two chances to hit to meet these guys. And uh, you know the only way you're going to climb up that ladder is to continue facing them, when and where the opportunity presents itself. So he's uh, right now to, to have that opportunity again. He's got to win a show and go back to Olympia and try it all over again. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I'm going to manage here some footage from his performance at the uh, Arnold UK. Uh, Akeem, you won the Tampa Pro a few years back. Um, mm-hmm. Do you consider this um, this physique that you brought to the Arnold UK possibly your best physique? I, I, I think Saturday night was probably, probably possibly my best physique. Yeah, yeah you're on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, Saturday night was, was definitely I was definitely on because I, I remember taking pictures from the hotel and in the natural lighting, and I was seeing stuff that I never saw before. <laughs> <laughs> What I've been saying all along is I, I do not like this two-day format. I think yeah. we should 24 hours. Uh, on Friday, we're seeing one show. On Saturday, we're seeing another. The bodybuilders don't know what it is. And uh, it's it's kind of playing Russian roulette when you have to do it over a 48-hour period. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, trying to dry out and suck up and, and try to evaluate what you have to do in another 24 hours. I know the playing field's level because everyone has to do it. But yeah. it should go one-day format. Saturday night, you were on. Okay. Um, Chris, Sean, I mean, it, this is an incredible physique. I, I love the fact that he's got a small waist and still he can carry mass to battle it out with guys like Nick Walker and Samson Dowda. The arms are world class. The waist is still small. He's got quads. It looks like he came running from New Jersey to California. <laughs> I mean, what is what is this guy missing, Chris? If I had to be extra critical, I would say I would like to see he had this powerful chest, shoulder, arm, quad thing uh, going on, always bringing that package. I would like to see thicker abs. I want, like, ice cubes here. Mm-hmm. So when you hit that most muscular, mm-hmm. it just completes the whole pose for you. Mm-hmm. What's missing in that front muscular pose is that your abs is not thick enough uh, I don't know how much work you put into that, mm-hmm. but I know for a fact they can be, they can stand to be thicker and bigger. What mm-hmm. do you think? Yeah, definitely. And I think I, I've improved them a lot. In, in the past, I never used to train abs. <laughs> I would just focus on like dieting down and they come in. But right. uh, for, the, for the past uh, couple of shows, I've been training them a lot more. And you can see the difference that like, before in my most muscular yeah, uh, coming, you wouldn't but, see the abs as much. But yeah, when you had now, that big chest and those big mm-hmm, legs, don't you think mm-hmm. that's the body part? Yeah, you know, I, I see that the abs can be a little bit deeper here, right? Yeah. But when it when it comes, I, I think his side chest, Sean, Chris, his side chest is world class. Is Olympia top three? Look at this. No, he's hitting that shot. 
very proper. You know, and there's some things to be said for genetics. It's a little bit longer on the torso and the lower back. Uh, it's just not there, the lower back, uh, in terms of like the lumbar area. I'm not looking for a Christmas tree. I'm not sure what you can do at this stage to, to bring the lower back up to match up with the width. And that's a genetic thing, which, you know, these shows are one from the back. When you're standing next to Adi Chupin, I mean, that, and, and Derek Lunsford, um, you know, you're dealing with the best in the world. So it's hard to find a whole – you can't have everything. I mean, look, the guy's got the Sergio Leva pose, the big bellowing quads, the thick pecs. There's some things that you don't have, and, and you can't make up for it simply by training in the gym. I know you probably train your ass off on your back area, mm -hmm. but like, like I, I used an analogy the other day, Shaquille O'Neal – couldn't hit a free throw if he wanted to, but he, we, we know he practiced every single day. That mm -hmm. back, lower back is hard to get, but it's never too late to continue trying to hammer that lower back because that's where these guys can, they're getting you on that lower back area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would just, I would just go right into my lat spread. I wouldn't spend so much time, you know, trying. creating all of you looking for a definition. Everyone knows you're hard. They saw that already. I would mm -hmm. just go right into that last spread and don't mm -hmm. be wasting time. Hard to, don't have back. What's that? Right. It's hard to flex what you don't have. So try so to don't, show don't, don't do it. Just hit your last spread. Your back double bicep is not bad at all. Mm -hmm. um, just try to fix those last little bit of holes, and you should be placing higher than you probably ever have. Because obviously you got a good formula going now, and you know it just brings me back to a few years ago uh, mm -hmm. when I, I went out there to the California with you. Yeah. You was pretty frustrated. You didn't want to, you was kind of like thinking like, man, this might be it. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. want to keep going through this type of thing. Can you take mm -hmm. us back and just try to like uh, tell the fans like kind of what you were thinking back then as opposed to now you're finding yourself back with the top guys doing uh, doing great things at the Arnold's and everyone's giving you accolades now. Uh, but that transition you made from that mindset to mm -hmm. now, what's the difference? Well, I mean, back then, you know, as you know, I mean, you remember I went out to Kuwait and uh, I did the whole uh, going out to Kuwait and training and stuff like that. And I spent the, the, the three months or whatever I, I did spend out there. And I came back to the U.S. and competed and I didn't get the results that I wanted. You know, so it was very frustrating to like give up that part of your life, you know, go out to a country that you know nothing about and focus on bodybuilding and come back and compete. And you're still not winning shows and stuff like that. So you get frustrated. And you, you know, you, you kind of get let down and you, you kind of doubt yourself and everything like that. But I, like, you, you, you spoke to me and you told me don't quit, you know, keep training, keep doing what you need to do. And I, I took your advice and I, I uh, you know, I got back in the lab, got back in the, in the gym and, and trained my hardest and was able to pull off a couple of wins after that. You know, I, I teamed yeah. up Alaska. We got a few wins after that. We even placed uh, top six in the Olympia. Yeah. And, uh, you know, after that, you know, like I said, I had a, a little bit of an issue with like coaching and stuff like that. And also, last year, if you guys you guys don't probably don't even know this, but I I did the both the Tampa Pro, which I won, the Olympia and the Arnold injured. You know, I had a my, my tore my rotator cuff, my bicep tendon, my rotator cuff was torn, and my labrum was torn. So I did both shows with a torn labrum and rotator cuff injury. And after the Arnold last year, which I played sixth place. I, I made it my, 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 my point to uh, go and do, uh, do the surgery. So I did the surgery. So it hasn't even been a year yet since I did the shoulder surgery. So I right. came back from that shoulder surgery. I uh, got back on stage at the Arnold, Ohio. Uh, I was able to get six, and then I pushed for the UK and came in third place. And so I knew it was you a journey from there. Yeah, I knew you were going to look different. I didn't expect you to look this good. Yeah, but yeah. It's going to be a different package because you basically tore down everything you had before and built, had to build back up. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I did. But I knew it, you did it smarter. I yeah. think the package is better. Mm -hmm. And Akeem, we were talking prior to going to the live that your performance in, in, the, um, in the United Kingdom was vastly improved from your performance in Ohio. Mm -hmm. What did you do specifically uh, to improve your physique? Well, I, you know, me and Chris, you know, we, we took the feedback from the judges in Ohio. And, and the, 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 the physique that I brought at, at finals in Ohio, the judges, they really loved that physique. So we took the feedback and uh, we went back and trained and uh, lowered some of the carbs and did more cardio and stuff like that and just tried to bring it in tighter for the Arnold UK, which we did for pre-judging because they said, yeah, you, you look drastically uh, better for pre-judging. And then for the night show, we just took it a step further and just bring it in even tighter. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Oh, Chris, Just, Sean, cor correct me if I'm wrong. If he's more conditioned, it does help the back a lot because it might not be, you know, um, the lower back still might be missing, but you start seeing more separation. Is that correct? You see more separation, but like, it's, like I said before, you know, hitting that, you know, in this side tricep, control the breathing, um, just go into that last breath, just, just grab that, you know, grab where you're going to grab and then just open that back. And the back double bicep is not bad. I don't think, I mean, you're going to look pretty damn complete once you just continue on what you're doing, man. Don't worry about yeah. uh, going off the diet or whatever. Just continue on, hammer it out and finish out, you know, mm -hmm. you know, strongly, man. Because I think with your physique, if you can stay, uh, uh, stay on your dietary, uh, um, you know, pattern throughout the off season, I think that's going to pay big dividends for you when it comes to the Olympia. Yeah, uh, I think I think that that played up after the surgery and stuff. I, I wasn't able to get as big as I usually do in the off season. Yeah, you know, so I had to actually put back on muscle to compete in these shows. I think that helped me a lot, also. Yeah. Yeah, man, I was happy for you. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Yeah. That a, yeah. that's a, that's one of the best looks I've saw. Saw you. You're on the right path. Just uh, try not to blow up and, and put on too much extra extra weight. Train closer to your body weight. Mm -hmm. you contest, uh, you'll you'll be able to glide right in. Look. Hottie's not going to be there. Samson's not going to be there. Uh, mm -hmm. If John De La Rosa shows up, that'd be nice to have that that trifecta, that that triple. You know, you guys traded places. Now you got that three, <laughs> third one to go through. I'd love to see that rematch. But because uh, <laughs> you're 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 after the surgery, you're not going backwards. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah. You're heading in the right direction. I just, don't get too many opinions from too many people. Just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Sean. So, Akeem, you are doing Toronto, and obviously, if you win in Toronto, then it's just the Mr. Olympia, right? Yes, yeah. And Toronto and if, is the first week of June or the second week of June? June 9th. Yeah. So, that's now the part of the is It's the second week, I think. So, are you taking yeah. your foot off the pedal, or are you keeping, keeping, the, keeping the motor on right now? I'm keeping the motor on. Yeah. I'm trying to improve on what I have right now. Yeah, I'm yeah, not going to just take my yeah, foot off the gas yet. How's your shoulder now? Do you have any issues with that? I'm still doing the therapy and everything like that. You know, I, I got to give a big shout out to my guy, uh, Gary Ashinoff. You know, he's, he's helped me tremendously in terms of the shoulder. So I'm going therapy once a week and it's been really, really helping me a lot. You know, that's important. Yeah. Like hey, I, I'm, able, I'm, able, I'm able to do weights that I never thought I would be able to do. You know, in terms of dumbbells and stuff like that, I'm, I'm pushing like 185, 160, stuff like that. And I wasn't able to do that before. Now, uh, when when it, in terms of your uh, your career, where's that now? Mm. And if I can go back in my own career, what um, you know, Sean can attest to that because I used to tear Sean up with the weights. So I would just go. I was leaving. I was using two heavier weights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you use a lot of heavier weights, but mm -hmm. I found mm -hmm. when I lightened it up and I used the muscle more. I got mm -hmm. a little bit different look out of the muscle, a little bit more density out of the muscle. So, mm -hmm. do you con? Do, would you ever consider of using lighter weights instead of looking to go back up to the two hundreds or the one eighty five like that? No, no, no. Yeah, I have, I've definitely been using lighter. Like even on legs, when I squat, I don't go past four plates. You know, before I'm you're talking to a guy that used to put like eight plates on his back and squat it. I know. I know. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't do any. I don't do any of that anymore. No, I stay at four <laughs> plates and just bang out and get reps and stuff like that. I train Check a lot out. smarter now. Yeah, so, Akeem, you used to put eight plates on each side and squat? Yeah, yeah. eight plates on each side and squat, yeah. That are and really I'm, I'm talking tomorrow. about low squat soon. I'm not, I'm not talking about more like, like no, no, half you, reps. You, you, you went all the way down, all the way up. <laughs> you were solid with it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just wondering what, how that really affects the muscle as far as, uh, you know, in this later part of your career. Yeah. It may, may give you a whole other few more years. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's that's exactly what what I'm trying to do right now. More longevity in terms of yeah, not not trying to do a bunch of crazy weights anymore. I don't need to do that. I build the muscle already. Yeah, you get now. all the likes and all the damn shares. Mm -hmm. You already had all that, so let, let's yeah, just exactly. try to just work on a physique. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chris used to come in the gym trying to lift all that heavy ass weight. I, took, <laughs> I was doing it too. I took him on some high rep workouts. Boy, he's laying on the floor looking for some place to throw up. <laughs> And the story grows, I can. And the yeah. story grows more and more every time we tell it. 
Uh, increase, <laughs> increase the reps, increase the, uh, the the volume, incorporate some giant sets in there. It, it mm-hmm. stimulates the muscle different. It gives you a different look. You do the same thing, you look the same way. So, mm-hmm. and lighter. Well, you're getting, getting a lot of deep tissue massage. Yeah, yeah I'm, 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 get, yeah, I'm getting massages also that too. That helps. I keep that every week, man. That, mm-hmm. that right there is gonna do wonders with your physique. Also, it may even, mm-hmm. uh, like I said, you know, keep adding more and more time to where you can compete and mm-hmm. uh, and earn your living and continue on your journey longer. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, it looks it looks like Akeem turned pro at the North Americans, right, Akeem? Yeah. And that was two thousand and thirteen, I think. Thirteen. Yeah. Correct. So it looks like you know you you you've been a pro for what over ten years, but mm-hmm. your physique doesn't look to be beat up, right? Obviously, yeah. you have the shoulder, but we, we never talk about Akeem Williams with a abdominal distension. You know, your legs are the same size. So mm-hmm. it looks like despite gaining tremendous mass, you have not injured yourself, correct? Correct, yes. And uh, my, my shoulder injury wasn't even in the gym. It was actually a car accident. So. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. It hurt your physique. It didn't hurt what you looked like Saturday night. No, no. <laughs> I, I was fortunate enough to get a good surgeon, and he did an amazing job, you know, repairing my, my shoulders. Wow. So what, well, is, what, um, is, what is what is what is the difference in your your the the dietary stuff that you've been doing? Because uh, obviously, whatever you did this time or these last couple of shows was way different than you ever done before. Uh, well, you, it, I mean, because I saw it, the striations it, in the quads. I saw the yeah. uh, you know, like I said, I was just looking for a little bit more abs, mm-hmm. uh, but I like to see the striations. That's that's to me dictates. You know, you did your work. You got the body fat. Uh, you got clean muscle lines. That's what mm-hmm. that's what I like to see, and I hope more guys start to have that type of look that you're going for. I think every, every, for for this diet, um, since I started working with Chris, every meal is actually clean meals. So, like we don't do no uh, cheap meals or you know refeeds. Or, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so like, like I'm used to like maybe you know. You, you diet hard for a couple of weeks and then you get a refeed or you get a cheat meal and stuff like that. We didn't, we didn't do any of that. You know, everything yeah. is clean. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Akeem. Akeem, I, w- I want to ask you a question. You've been to the first call out of the Mr. Olympia. And mm-hmm. I remember because I was judging. Um, and I think the current Mr. Olympia at that time, when you got the first call out, was Brandon Curry. The year that you got your first call out was the first year that Big Rami won, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, that was correct, yeah. So on that first call out, I remember you were way to the the left, you know, on Mm -hmm. the judge's uh, point of view, you were way to the left. And I remember um, Big Rami and Brendan Curry were in the middle, but when you hit your side chest and your side triceps, I said, man, Akeem Williams is a really, really um, tough comparison for Brandon Curry because, you know, you could say that Brandon could always have been just a little bit more conditioned. And on that Mm -hmm. show, you were conditioned and you had the mass. So I even felt like in some poses, you were going head to head with Brandon Curry. Chris Cormier and I talk about you all the time. We have a special care for you because... You're this nice guy that likes to play the under underdog, but we don't consider you the underdog. <laughs> we think you are. You, we think your first call out at the Olympia. What's your projection? You know, if you win Toronto, where do you want to finish at the Mr. Olympia? Do you want to win the whole thing and, and, and surprise the world? Uh, you know, or it's a top three realistic, a top five. Where do you see victory for you at this point? It's funny you said that because I think after the Arnold UK, I had a little conversation with Roddy, and Roddy basically told me it's never too late. They say it took him almost like 10 years to win his first Mr. Olympia. So he said that Akeem, it's never too late. So if I'm going to the Olympia, if I went to Toronto and I'm going to the Olympia, I'm going to win. Yeah. I think every show that I've done. Every show that I've done, I've never gone in there saying, like, I would be happy with, like, fifth place or happy with sixth place. I always say in my, to myself, like, I'm going to win. Yeah, I, I think every bodybuilder that actually qualifies for the Olympia, regardless mm-hmm. of where they placed in the past, I mean, there's mm-hmm. only one 
you're going. You know, yeah. I mean, if you want to watch the Olympia, you can stay at home and eat pizza and watch it on, on the pay per view. Exactly. But you know, you gotta assume that everyone has the mm-hmm. same risk factor for injury, for mm-hmm. sickness in their peak. Uh, I'll tell you, my last experience in the Mr. Olympia in 2001. It's the only thing I, I put you in do. retirement. Uh, you didn't put me in retirement, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but but you dreamt about it. I remember. <laughs> Go ahead. Here, here I retired. You know, uh, things were happening that year, 2001. And it, Ronnie Coleman almost wound up in the hospital. He says it. He's on record that that weekend he almost died. That was in 01. He mm-hmm. won that. Jay Cutler had failed the diuretic test that they never enforced, but he failed it nonetheless. He could have been disqualified. And Kevin Lavroni wasn't even registered as an IFB athlete and wasn't supposed to be able to even compete in 2001. If all of those things had mm-hmm. played out, mm-hmm. I'd have been Mr. Olympia, my last Mr. Olympia. I mean, mm-hmm. you don't have a chance to win unless you believe that you can, regardless yeah. of who's there. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. In my hindsight, being retired in 22 years, I don't look back and, and wish all of those things had happened. That was, it, it played out the way it was supposed to. But mm-hmm. you can only have the satisfaction of trying and going through the journey and, and wherever the wherever you wherever it lands mm-hmm. about five six if you win it only happens if you show up on game day ready to compete and you have to believe that on any given day why not you I mean Ronnie yeah. Cole dead last in the ninety two Olympia. Jay Cutler yeah. wasn't in the top end of his first Olympia. I mean mm-hmm. it, people come from nowhere. Chris Granny- Brandon Curry, I told him he should retire and go down to the T12. And look, he winds up winning three Arnold Classics on three different continents, and he mm-hmm. wins the Arnold Classic twice in Ohio and becomes Mr. Olympia. Just when you think people want you to, to disappear, you hold on and, and doors open. So I'm glad yeah. to see you better as your career has gone further. Thank you. Chris, um, Akeem Williams, at his best conditioning with an improved back, where do you project him at the Mr. Olympia? Can this guy take down some of the shorter guys like Hadi Chupin and Derek Lunsford? Always, always good, man. I, I mean, like, let's say, let's say the abs was ripped out. Let's say, uh, you know, he's been working on his posing a lot for many years. I think he likes the ones that he's working with right now. Um, I think makes him adjustments from the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because easily being a top four, top three, uh, you know, this year, easily. It's just going to be up to how you, how you go about your, your business of bodybuilding, how you go, you know, stay on your diet, stay focused, leave yourself, uh, you know, pushing yourself harder, find yourself, putting yourself harder in your cardio, putting yourself harder in your practice and posing, pushing uh, yourself harder, you know, more. In the, in the gym and, and, and being smarter about it. But it's on your mind like like you just started. Like you yeah. got to have it. That that type of hunger can, can put you, you know, closer to the top in that area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like this is it. This is it. Like at the end of the day, this is it. I mean, it's not like the best years of your career are behind you. They're actually mm-hmm. ahead of you. And I can tell you, Hottie Chupin wants to be Mr. Olympia again. Mm-hmm. Forget about what just happened over the past two weekends. That money doesn't even matter. He's got mm-hmm. Derek Lundford firmly in his sights. And Derek knows Potty wants that title back. And Samson has something to prove. You know there's going to be three guys doing the business. They're going to eat, sleep, and breathe trying to get there in October. You're going to use June as the, as the lightning rod. you got to yeah. get, that, get that victory. And then, you know, you'll, you'll run on adrenaline with the possibilities. Uh, you know, a top five finalist. Is, is better than the last time you were there. So mm-hmm. the bar might be a little bit lower, but again, you don't control what happens to those four guys in front of you, those three guys in front of you. Anything can happen. Yeah. So right now I'm doing one show at a time. I'm thinking mm-hmm. if Toronto's what you're focused on, you're on the clock. I mean, every day you're losing time. So mm-hmm. more cardio, more posing, more hunger, more you know vitriol. You've got to go. This is your Olympia coming up in June, and that is your redemption. Yeah. You win there, that'll give you enough gas in the tank to get you to October. Yeah, uh, true. Chris, Sean, look at the size of his legs compared to Samson Dowda and Hadi Chupin and De La Rosa. Not That's only fair. that, does he have more separation than yes. them on, on this side, side pose? 
Oh, Arguably, of course. You can see that that's, that's, that's always been a, yeah. a area that he dominates most competitions. I don't, I probably every competition uh, that he's ever been in. You know, in this shot right here, if you see yourself with a little bit more delt size, a little bit uh, more twist at the torso uh, clockwise, that's going to give you the shot that you want to see here. And that's mm -hmm. going to make you, like, I would say, one of the uh, premier bodybuilders in the world in this particular shot. And you do the same with the side tricep, you know, work on those different areas of holes you got coming and work on that posing and, you know, show us what you got, man. Show the world what you, no, what you really so are. Chris, I think you're also, uh, to, to this optic right here, you got to be mindful where you're at on that stage. You don't want that distance between you and Samson. So yeah. before... It, before you get set in your shot, make sure you're aware of where you're in proximity. You want to be closer to those guys. You don't want to be out there on your own. Get, get a little bit closer. Close that gap down. Let them let them feel the yeah. dirt. Let, let them feel the dirt. I, I, I think that, that that was one of the problems I had, too, because these guys, you know, whenever they, they put them in, in their spots in the, in, in, in the lineup, they always move closer to each other, and I just try to hold my ground. And before I know it, I'm all the way on the outside. That happened at the Olympia in 2020 also. Because I'm put, I'm standing right there, exactly where they put me. I'm standing right there, but all these guys are always trying to bunch up together. Just be mindful of that, man. Yeah. I would follow Sue because then I'll leave you like way out there, and everybody's yeah. looking over here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah you know? it, it looks it looks like you don't like him, Akeem. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was actually listening to the judges. I say, do you have a, do you have a problem with these <laughs> guys? Trying to follow the rules, like right? Yeah, I'm trying to follow the rules, but they're not following the rules. I don't know if you know if you saw on on uh. I think it was a uh, the, the 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 call out in uh, finals. You know, Steve was like, "All right, that's it. That's it, right. That's it, guys. Get off the stage." And I'm walking off, and these guys are still hitting poses, and I yeah. look like I was just like quitting. Wait, you better I wait. I was quitting and walking away. But and I I'd rather wait. Him, I'd rather make Steve mad. I'd rather yeah, he got mad. He got mad. He told him to stop it. Cut it out. And I'm walking away because I'm listening to Steve saying, "That's it, guys. You know that like, that that concludes free judge." And I'm walking away, and these guys are on stage still hitting poses. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta. Hey Chris, Chris, yes. quick question: If he opens up a little bit more uh, the clavicles on top, does yes. does it does that improve a little bit? Because yes, you can see, sure. I think Hadi, um, you know, Hadi is kind of turning a little bit more. It's looking Hadi is a great poser, by the well, way. Might be one there. It's, yeah, uh, that's that's gonna do you better. Mm -hmm. um, but like you say, he still like you say, he still was nursing the shoulder. He's probably got a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of that, you know, dealing with that in the gym and the poses and everything. Hottie haven't had, you know, a shoulder issue, but I think that's still him coming back. That's like when you tear an ACL in football, that first season you come back, you can come back, but there's still going to be more in the tank, you know, in the future once you fully heal up mentally and physically. And, and look, he's, right he's, now he saw, came I, back. I moved, I moved over, yeah. I saw yeah. I had a huge gap, and that's how I moved over. Yeah, so just to, just real quick, I mean, like, in football, they study the game film for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. study they, – they're not necessarily looking at the competitors. you got to look at what you're doing. So you don't mm -hmm. repeat the same mistakes. So that's a good yeah. thing to review and yeah. not really get caught up in oh, I'm fourth or I got fifth or whatever. you got to look at what do I got to do on my next outing. Mm -hmm. Be mindful of those so small – yeah. In that last spread, you brought your thumbs up, like say an inch and a half higher, mm -hmm. and stick them right there. Don't let them move. That's that would have been a nice shot for you in the back. And right here, like you say, clock, uh, counterclockwise, a little bit more, but keeping that that hand and if that hand is in a good spot right there, just turn one clockwise of, a little bit more. One of the things I'm noticing you're getting in a bad habit, Akeem, is you're mm -hmm. doing what Sergio Leva Jr. does, and that's hiding your body. I know you want to have your chest shoulders and arms but when you bring your arms hiding your midsection it looks like you're hiding so yeah. get, get in the habit of just getting back to that relaxed position and standing mm -hmm. there but instead of crossing your midsection covering mm -hmm. up your body and, and, and trying to we see the chest shoulders and arms mm -hmm. but this is not a relaxed position when you're doing this mm -hmm. in between and you know what I i'm can't, talking about. you know I can't, you know, so what's your mindset in this pose like with your chest, are you flexing your chest together? Are yeah. you spread it out, spread it I'm, together? Yeah, I'm flexing it together. Is that what you did, Sean? Because Sean, you were a master at that pose. I, 
I would do yeah. that because you used to do that I'm, one. It's almost like I'm using one hand to push against the other hand so I can bring my triceps into right. it. When I, I'm pushing against each other so I can feel my triceps. It automatically forces my mm -hmm. pecs. Chest. My but chest. it wasn't so much chest. Yeah. No. Not, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that'll more. keep you wider. Uh, I can, that'll keep you wider if you're not mm -hmm. focusing so much on your chest. Okay. Right. Focus on the arms more. Mm -hmm. And keep this, keep the, the the width of your your chest and everything in the pose, keeping you a bigger person. Everyone's going to see the chest. You come down too small. So mm -hmm. you want to stay up big. Stay, stay big. Strong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I think this was a great show for Akeem Williams because he is on the final call out here with. Um, top two and top three at the Olympia. And uh, he was able to beat John De La Rosa. Congratulations to John. Um, also um, uh, having an amazing performance. But now we got to look into guys like Rafael Brendon, Nick Walker, Andrew Jack, all these guys coming into play. Nick Walker is doing the New York Pro. Rafael Brendon is doing the Arnold Classic South America. And it looks like in Toronto... Do you know anybody else that's competing in Toronto against you? No, I'm not sure yet who's in Toronto. I Hold think, on, let I me. Think he could come away with that win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I think so. Looks, who cares who shows up in Toronto? If that's yeah. the one you go get that title. Yeah. You're going to scare people out of there, I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get people out of there. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a well, hard trip. Uh, to Toronto is close to home. Well, I, 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 per I perceive that Akeem Williams will be this year at the Mr. Olympia. And, um, you know, he's, he's, Chris Cormier and I, we can't get enough of Akeem Williams because we think he's one of those guys that still has not fulfilled his potential. Um, you know, obviously one of the biggest arms, big legs, small waist. We just need a little bit more back in conditioning and like uh chris said maybe a little bit of tweaking here and there in the posing in akeem williams i i firmly believe he is um a first call out at the olympia type of talent i mean you know we we often talk about some of the other bodybuilders in front of him that could be improving certain things we talk about simpson dowda he could have a little bit more of a back you know, separation, a little bit more conditioning. We talk about Derek Lunsford, the Mr. Olympia. He could have better abs, better most muscular. We talk about Hadi Chupin. You know, we got to keep that waist, you know, streamlined. And just like any other bodybuilder, Akeem Williams needs to fix a few things to be on top. But in terms of talent, Chris and Sean, correct me if I'm wrong. This guy has a... a, a, a a talent that it, it's it's pretty high, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Sean. Well, my, my my personal opinion is if you do the same thing, you're going to look the same way. Mm -hmm. Get out of the zone. Take some of those workouts, those mm -hmm. heavy workouts you're used to doing. Every mm -hmm. once in a while, take the reps up. Get in there, do 40, 50 repetitions. It's a mm -hmm. different type of sensation. Use, mm -hmm. the work, use the weights as a tool. You get in mm -hmm. there and you start off your leg routine with 50 repetitions on leg extensions and you mm -hmm. do four or five sets of those put your squats at the end of your workout you're not squatting I, 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 I saw I saw that's how I slept I, I put it on the yeah, end of the workout you might be squatting two plates but mm -hmm. you want to be squatting two plates for 20 25 reps mm -hmm. instead of eight or ten mm -hmm. um those type of inner infusions into your workout routine will give you a different look over the long run so mm -hmm. I'm recommending start injecting a lot more high repetition workouts Mm -hmm. faster paced non-restable workouts which means mm -hmm. your workout partner goes you go and you take those things it's a fitness type of a workout but every mm -hmm. so often every couple of workouts that's what you need you need more um uh, 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 fiber type, i guess yeah. Yeah. and that mm -hmm. might come out through some dieting i'm not sure how much cardio you're doing but if you're not doing those type of workouts they're the kind of workouts that will get you in a different kind of shape how, mm -hmm. how, how often are you doing your posing how often well, uh, well, for these shows, I, I was posing pretty much like every day for these shows. I would get up early in the morning. I get up early in the morning, do my posing, and do cardio right after that. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
And that's something that's something new that I've been doing. You know, I never used to do that. I hope before. you keep it up, man. I yeah, hope you keep yeah, it up. I, I definitely will, yeah. Well, Akeem, I'm going to tell you something. If you're not at the first call out at the Mr. Olympia, Chris Cormier and I will be backstage. We'll have a serious conversation with you, okay? <laughs> well, I got you. Because, sir. Eric, sometimes the first call out is not the first call out. You know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. But that's uh, where you uh, want to be. Doesn't on matter. prime time muscle, on prime time muscle, we talk really good about you, and we are gonna do our our speculation first call out Olympia. And Chris Kermier always says, "Beware of Akeem Williams. Beware of Akeem Williams." So if you're not there, we're gonna corner you in the backstage. Okay, Akeem? I got you. I'm gonna look bad. I'm trying to keep my. No, no, no. I, I, I'm not gonna. Do, I'm not. I'm not. I, I told a lot of people I wouldn't disappoint them for the Arnold Classic. You know, like when the, when the Arnold Classic the list came out, every, nobody even had me in the top in the top five, top six. They they said I probably placed dead last, and I said, "No, nah, I'm gonna be in the top six. Well, yeah, no, Akeem, Akeem, you like to be the underdog. You said it yourself, <laughs> but I don't. Every time I see your name, I tell Chris, watch Akeem Williams. If he comes in condition, this guy can move up real quick. That's why I wasn't surprised at all because I know your side chest. My favorite side chest in bodybuilding right now are Nick Walker and Akeem Williams. Those are my favorite side chests because – That's when Nick Walker, his waist is not compromised on the side chest, and he's got tons of mass. I think you and him have the two best side chests. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been a fan of Akeem Williams for the longest time. I think when you add that much muscle on the arms and the legs and you're capable of keeping a small waist, you are a genetic marble in bodybuilding. Akeem Williams is somebody that belongs in the first call out at the Mr. Olympia when he is at his best. And we've seen that in 2020 when he was right there next to Hadi Chupin, next to Brandon Curry, and next to Big Rami. Arnold Classic Ohio was not the true representation of Akeem Williams. Arnold Classic UK is what Akeem Williams is represents in bodybuilding akeem i'll give you the final word to all your fans that love you including chris cormier who cries every time you're out of the top five <laughs> right, <baby>. uh, <laughs> i mean i i, I mean i i got i got i have to say I, i was really really happy with the, the amount of support that i got going into the shows man you know i, I everybody out there that like sent me a dm or just commented and uh Wish me congratulations. I just want to say thank you to all, all those people out there, man. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. Much success here from all your fans. A lot of people just saying congratulations. So, Akeem Williams, congratulations. I want to thank my co-host, the legend himself, Sean Ray. He's the 1987 <laughs> national <laughs> champion. He is, is that correct? 1987, right? Yes. A long time ago, man. 1987, man. Chris and I were not even born. <laughs> I was a teenager. You were not born. <laughs> no, I was born. 1987 <laughs> national champion, Iron Man champion, Arnold Classic champion. And I'm going to tell you, your argument about being Mr. Olympia, 1994 is a much stronger argument, okay? Um, <laughs> that's the one that a lot of people had you winning. Uh, and I want to thank the 1993 Mr. USA's four-time Arnold Classic champion, my co-host at Primetime Muscle, gets paid more money than me and Tim Wilkins, but that's okay. <laughs> He's the legend. I'm the athlete, though. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go after you in the in in the backstage and steal all your Versace shirts. <laughs> my name is Tarek Elgindi with Akeem the Beast Williams, Sean Ray, and Chris Cormier. We'll see you next time. Go to your thing, man. Good job.